guys, I'm Mr. Mahmood, and I am really excited to put together a short video on what these COVID vaccines are and how they work uh, using only high school level biology to explain it. I'm going to do that for three reasons. One, I've been teaching high school biology for 16 years now, so it's kind of my wheelhouse. Uh, number two, I have a lot of friends, adult friends in my social circles that are asking questions about this virus uh, and about the vaccine. So this is just as much for my adult friends as it is for my students. And number three, honestly, I'm just kind of geeking out at how incredibly relevant my biology content is to the real world. It's pretty awesome. This conversation is really going to dive into a lot of stuff in a very short period of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pretty brief, but I'm going to provide links to lectures of my own that have a lot more detail for anyone that wants to dive further into the wormhole. So I encourage you guys to do that along the way. We're going to answer four basic questions uh, throughout this conversation. Number one is what is mRNA and how does it relate to a vaccine? There are at the point at the state of publication, there are two vaccines that are either at approval or almost at emergency approval to actually be used in the United States, and that's the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines, both of which are mRNA vaccines. So first, we're going to just have to understand what mRNA is, then we'll touch base on how mRNA is actually used in conjunction in this vaccine. We'll talk about why the vaccine has to be stored at such cold temperatures and why we need two doses of it. So let's jump right in. So mRNA is related to what we consider the central dogma of biology. This is the general idea that sort of centers around everything you understand about molecular biology. We've always kind of been told that DNA is what gives you your traits, right? The reality is that's not exactly true. It's actually your proteins that give you your traits. It's the proteins that perform the functions of the cells. Uh, they either do specific acts or they, they work as enzymes to speed up chemical reactions. So certain reactions happen more often than others. It's that combination of all those functions that actually gives you your traits. The DNA is responsible for making those proteins. And so those proteins are made purely based on the sequence of bases in the DNA. So the process that actually helps make the proteins in your DNA is this process called protein synthesis, of which RNA is a very, very strong factor. Um, and it plays a very important, a few very important roles. There's a few varieties of RNA in the process. And the one that we're going to focus in on is what's called messenger RNAs. So when my cells want to actually make proteins, they're not going to sit here and bother making proteins from every single part of the entire DNA line, right? You can have tens of thousands of proteins made based on the genetic information in the DNA of every single cell of your body. So instead, your cell will only prioritize the parts that it needs to make proteins from. So instead of getting the information from the DNA and expecting the DNA to go out to the ribosome to make this protein, the DNA is going to stay protected in the nucleus. And that's a good thing for our DNA and the continuity of our species, that it's not going to have any chance of really getting damaged. So instead, it's going to make a copy of that information. Again, just that one section of just that one gene to pull out from the nucleus. That copy is then going to go out to the ribosome to put together that protein. And that copy is called messenger RNA or mRNA. So mRNA is something that's meant to be a temporary transcription, a temporary copy that's made from the DNA to go out and actually put together the protein. Once the protein gets put together, that mRNA gets broken apart very quickly by enzymes in your body, and those, those uh, parts get reused throughout the cell. So this process of making messenger RNA is meant to be a temporary process to help put together and assemble your proteins, right? So structurally, mRNA is very different. The line on the left is actually the messenger RNA compared to the DNA on the right. So it's just single-stranded because it's just copying one side of the DNA. It has a different sugar, ribose instead of the deoxyribose that's in DNA. And it has some differences in bases as well. In particular, it has uracil in the place of thymine. Uracil is a much more volatile base and is likely to change a lot more easily. So there are a lot of reasons RNA is not meant to last very long. And structurally, it's okay that it is the way it is because it's just transporting the information short term from the nucleus out to put together the protein. Now, to really talk about how an mRNA vaccine works, we first have to kind of understand how a virus works. So again, I'm going to fire through this. A virus is a component that's not capable of actually replicating by itself. And so what it does is it invades a host, and then it manages to get into a certain cell. And it can't just get into any cell that it wants to, because cells have evolved to protect themselves pretty well. So the only way a virus can actually trick a cell into getting into itself and uh, taking over is if it can use one of its keys, what are called receptor proteins or spike proteins, to match to a shape of a receptor that's on the surface of the cell that's a match, like a lock and a key. So if that key fits, 
then the cell is tricked into thinking it's something that's supposed to be allowed in, and then the virus is able to enter the cell. Once the virus enters the cell, it usually works very quickly, and this kind of virus is called a lytic virus. It works very quickly to manipulate the genetic information of the virus into the cell, and then it takes over the cell. So whatever it is the cell was doing before, now it just becomes a factory for making more viruses. And so all of these new virus structures get put together and then assembled together. And then as new viruses break out of the cell, they typically cause the cell to rupture or break, and that's what kills the cell. And in the process, you started with one virus, and now you can have tens of thousands of these viruses all getting released, and surrounding cells are all exactly the same, so the whole process can start over. So one cell can turn into millions of cells very quickly, and it causes a lot of cell destruction along the way. And that's where we get into the real dangerous situations of some of these viruses, like the one that causes COVID. So with most vaccines, what we're talking about here to try to protect your body from a particular virus is to keep it from ever being able to enter the cell and to block that process of that key matching up with the lock and tricking the cell into letting its way in. So that process is something that can happen naturally if you catch the virus and you develop the slow immunity to it, or it can happen artificially in the, in the case of a vaccine. So the way, the way your immune system works here is you're uh, initially gonna recognize that a virus is something that's not supposed to be there by looking for those unique receptors, by those unique keys or those spike proteins. If your immune system, which has kind of patrolling cells that travel the body all the time, identifies that there's a key that it's not used to seeing. It triggers some other cells to come in, particularly something called a helper T cell to match up its own locks, a variety of its own receptors to the receptor that it's identified as foreign. And once it finds the right match, it'll trigger another kind of cell to start making antibodies against it. So the cells that make these antibodies are called plasma B cells, and you have a huge variety of them, each of which makes unique antibodies, which are opposites to the keys. And so once the helper T cell identifies the right shape needed, it'll signal the right B cell to start making more of itself and then start making those antibodies. Once you have the antibodies, you can actually block the key so that it can no longer get into the cell that it's supposed to get into. And so once you've developed the antibodies, it slows down the virus from getting into any more cells. And once a virus can no longer enter any cells, the virus can't function and your body will eventually, hopefully be able to overcome the infection, right? So this process can happen slowly and it can happen in a very high impact where all of your energy is pretty much committed to fighting the infection. And that's what makes you feel very sick, right? All of your symptoms come from your body's defense fighting off a disease causing all of the inflammatory response and everything related to the second line of defense. And so eventually, hopefully you get to the point where you've been able to overcome the virus. Most of those B cells will actually stay in your bloodstream and become what are called memory cells. And it's that memory cell production and that, that flow in your bloodstream that gives you your immunity. So you can either get it naturally or you can get it artificially. And this is what vaccines do, is they try to give you a way to develop these same memory cells over a much more controlled environment where you're not gonna have to fight off the infection and have such severe symptoms or the risk of the virus actually winning and uh, really having some serious side effects on you. So these mRNA vaccines work in a very, very unique way. Uh, in the past, what's been done is you would be given like a weakened or an attenuated form of the virus, like with the flu shot. And so that way the flu doesn't have a chance to really be successful in your body, but it lets your body go through the same steps and eventually match up the antibodies so that it can make the memory cells to protect you from that exact shape of spike protein if it ever sees it again in the future. Now, what's really cool about these new um, vaccines, the mRNA vaccines, is it does it a little differently. It's not gonna inject the entire virus and whether it's a weakened form or not into your body. So at no point do you actually get the full representation of the virus. So there's a question, can you actually catch COVID from the COVID vaccine? The answer is absolutely not. Because the only thing that is gonna be put in this line is the RNA responsible for making a spike protein of COVID-19. So if you can make a spike protein of this SARS-CoV-2, this vaccine, the virus that actually causes COVID, um, all the cells are gonna be asked to do is just make a little bit of this protein. And that little production of the protein will hopefully just be enough to get your immune system to start fighting and matching up to that particular shape. So even though the virus has absolutely no chance of replicating as a whole, you're not giving the information to make the other parts of the virus. You're just giving the information to make these spike proteins. It's enough to trigger your immune system 
into developing the antibodies that can match that spike protein. That's the way it works. So the way that this mRNA vaccine is able to make its way into your um, into your cells, into the muscle cells, because it's usually a shot that's in your arm, is it's surrounded by this uh, series of lipids or fats or oils. Uh, it's called a lipid nanoparticle. The reason this nanoparticle is so cool is because it actually has the same structure as the cell membranes of your cells. So it can easily fuse with the same shape of your cells and go through something called endocytosis and actually enter into the cell that way. Once it actually gets into your cells, this is so cool. Instead of going all the way to your DNA and having to integrate with your DNA and then turn around and start going through the normal transcription process to make more RNA, it just goes straight out to the ribosomes right where the assembly of the protein happens happens and just says, hey, uh, you guys mind if I uh, put together a protein real quickly? I got some information here. It's kind of the equivalent of saying, okay, I'm going to walk into a uh, cheesecake factory style restaurant kitchen, like everything you could possibly want available, all the ingredients are there, right? And even though they're doing a hundred different things, I'm just going to walk into the kitchen and say, uh, hey, you guys mind if I make a burger real quickly? I'm just kind of hungry. I got, the I got the information here. You got the ingredients. Let's just throw this together really fast. That's basically what this vaccine is doing inside of your cells. It has absolutely no sort of uh, communication with the nucleus. It has no communication with the DNA. It just goes straight to where the proteins are put together. You already have the information in the form of this mRNA, and it's just gonna start making just the spike protein that's the match for COVID. And it's just the one that COVID uses to get into all of these cells of your respiratory system. So having the ability to just make the receptor protein is awesome. So the question of can this vaccine actually cause you to catch COVID, the answer is absolutely not because the information for the whole virus will never enter your body. It's purely the information just to make these little spike proteins, which are the keys that the actual virus uses to get into the cell. So if these keys can make their way back out onto the cell and let your immune system recognize, hey, this key's not supposed to be here. Let's go through the steps and process to eventually get the B cells to make the antibodies. And now those become memory cells in your bloodstream. Now we have the exact same memory cells that you would have had if you had to fight this whole infection. And it'll be ready if in the future, the virus actually enters the body those spike proteins not only will immediately be recognized, but those B cells are already in the bloodstream and will mass produce tons of antibodies to block them from entering into your cells before they ever have the chance to get in. So this process of developing this protein is the whole purpose of the mRNA vaccine, to make these spike proteins, which are the exact shape of the actual proteins that are found on the virus. The whole virus will never ever make its way in your cells. Super cool, right? Isn't this awesome? So the whole point of the vaccine is to just make a bunch of these proteins so that your immune system can get used to the shape, recognize it, and build immunity against it by making the antibodies and having those B cells ready in your bloodstream as memory cells for the rest of your life. So this process really is all about building those memory B cells. This is how you develop immunity and you can do this artificially with the introduction of these mRNA vaccines. So another question about the vaccine is why is it that they have to be stored at such cold temperatures? And I've kind of answered that already. It's about the structure of RNA. It is not made to last very long. It's super delicate. It breaks down very, very easily. And it's supposed to be able to break down very easily because as soon as the information gets passed over to make the protein, you're supposed to recycle those parts right away. So if those uh, RNA were present in about the same temperature or anywhere close to the same temperature as the human body, or they warmed up very quickly, you would have all these enzymes in your cells and throughout your bloodstream that would destroy the RNA before it ever had the chance to enter into the cell. So the freezing of the RNA actually keeps enzymes from working well around them because enzymes are very specific to their environment. And if you just change the temperature or pH just a little bit, they don't work efficiently at all. So the, basically we're trying to make it to where our natural immunity doesn't destroy these RNA before it ever gets to do its job. So if they do thaw or they're not as frozen as they're supposed to be, the RNA is likely to be damaged and not be able to do its job by the time it actually enters your bloodstream. And the last question of why you actually need uh, to get two doses, uh, this virus, again, because of the process and the, and the breakdown of the RNA, uh, it takes a little while for your immune system to build up the response. It's not as intensive an attack. It's not something that your body prioritizes. 
because you're not fearful of a mass infection, right? So uh, the process usually takes about two weeks for you to go through the immunity artificially, especially with something like this, where it's just an RNA structure. It's not even something that's replicating through. So the first round is really just about getting initial exposure of these spike proteins and slowly starting to develop the memory B cells against it. By the second time around, there should already be an initial exposure. And so by introducing that same protein again and getting those proteins back into your stream, you're going to have a much more intense response because you've already got memory cells prepared. And that intense response will just further escalate the production of more and more of these antibodies, more and more of these B cells that'll stay in your bloodstream for the rest of your life. And that's why the second round actually tends to have slightly more side effects than the first with this virus, as with most viruses that are you're giving boosters for, you're giving two rounds of, because there's already uh, a natural defense. And so the reaction will naturally be stronger the second time around. When we say reactions, we're talking about minimal side effects where you have a mild fever, redness, soreness around the area, because that's just a sign that your immune system is doing what it's supposed to do. It's attacking those spikes that it knows are not supposed to be there, and you already have the memory cells to fight against them. So that's it, guys. I just wanted to give you a quick run through. Um, feel free to go to these sites to get some more detail and more information. I'm not here to suggest that you absolutely should or absolutely should not take this vaccine. I simply want to take advantage of my experience as an educator to help educate our community and make a logical decision that makes the best sense for you. So thank you guys very much for watching. Please share this any way you can. And I hope that it does nothing more than just help people understand a little bit more about this vaccine and how it works. Thank you guys very much. Take care.